care package inbound. Hey everyone, it's Chappelle Nerfenstein here and ooh look, we're making something today. It's been a while. I'm gonna make a dice box out of floor matting from Raccoon Lagoon, one of my favorite VR games. So I've got a VR tie in there. I'm hoping it works, haven't made anything for ages. Let's start with our materials. Sharp knife, ruler, cutting mat, and these floor mats that you get. You might use these for your VR actually. They're a cheap alternative to the fancy uh, mat that you can buy. I'm just gonna cut some strips out for the main section of the chest. I haven't got anything other than uh, screenshots to go by, so we are playing it by ear. We'll give it a go and see how we get on. Start by cutting off these uh, edge bits, of course, they're of no use to anybody. You need a nice sharp blade for this to get a nice smooth edge. So if you've got a sharp blade, your edge should look like that. Really, really smooth. It doesn't really matter, but it will make your project a bit better at the end. This, by the way, will work for any dice box. It doesn't have to be Raccoon Lagoon. I've chosen Raccoon Lagoon because I've enjoyed it so much. I wanted to pay a little homage to the creators of that game by creating something three-dimensional from it. So how are all my maker friends? It has been a while, hasn't it? It's hard when you don't have a uh, workshop. I'm just gonna mark off some increments, make sure that our cuts are straight. Just lop the sides off. We don't need the these bits. All right, so it's a fairly rectangular looking box. So it's all guesswork, obviously. I anyway, I think we'll go for three up, five across. We just need another one of those. As with all these tutorial builds on my channel, if you take your time, it will be neater than this. I'm rushing it a little, because we've only got a couple of hours today. Free. All right, so that's the front and the back of our chest. Now we just need the sides. So the sides on the chest in the game actually go within. So we'll be measuring it from here. No formula to this, but I will put the uh, measurements up if you need them at the end. You can just eyeball it like I have. Ta-da! I do have a cutting mat, by the way, but it's too small. So that's why I've opted just to use another piece of foam. Ta-da! So now what do we need? We need a base for the inside. As I say, you could measure this millimeter for millimeter, and obviously it's gonna turn out better. There we go, so you can see when that's all glued together, that's gonna give us our dice box. You can either texture it on the inside so it all matches, or you can leave it flat, it's entirely up to you, just flip it over. Now I'm actually going to texture the chest now because it's got wood grain and planks. So to make the planks, I'm gonna start with the sides. So the sides on the screenshots that I've got essentially look like down the center, they are two different planks. So to do that is super easy. You just measure, right? And now you've got your, this is where the plank's going to go, right down the center here. And how we do that, if it's a deep crevice, so because it's planks, it's a deeper, deeper crevice. You can use this. You can also use a hot knife if you've got one, but we're just gonna use this because you're more likely to have this in your house. And you just cut slightly on an angle as to where you've measured. So we're gonna go slightly on an angle, not all the way through. You just wanna go a couple of millimeters through. Turn it and do the same thing again. Again, not all the way through. Just a couple of millimeters through. And with any luck, you should be able to pick that out now. And that gives you your two planks. Do that on the other side as well. There we go, there's our, the sides of our chest. Okay, so the sides also have the same thing. You know it's roughly in the center anyway, but Easy does it. We should be able to get a pretty good cut on here as well. So there we go. You can see it's not gone all the way through. You're just sort of taking a ridge out. Next up, we're going to do the wood grain. And wood grain and foam is super easy to do if you've got a, 
a heat gun. I don't have a heat gun, so I'm gonna test this with a hairdryer on high and we'll see how we go. If it's a complete balls up, I'll use my hot knife, but I know that you probably don't have a hot knife, so I'd rather just do it this way so that I know you can do it at home. So you get your blade, again, super easy, and you wanna sort of just go where you think wood grain would go. So wood grain's generally got a few little knots in it. You've got your straightish lines, things like that. And then when you hit that with the hairdryer, fingers crossed, heat gun, uh, that will open up to show whatever design you've done in it because the foam will pull away from itself. So it'll sort of do this. So it'll become more obvious as to what you've cut in. So you just wanna make it look like wood grain. That, that's it, that's as easy as it gets. And you want it to go along because these are meant to be planks of wood. So I'm just gonna do that now. I'll speed it up for you, it's super boring, but it's essentially this all the way along. And I'll see you on the flip. Okay, there's one done. I'm just gonna do one and hit it with hairdryer because if the hairdryer doesn't work, I'm gonna to have to use a hot knife. So fingers crossed, because I'd rather it be the hairdryer for you guys. So I'll be back in a sec. I'm just gonna get the hairdryer, put it on high and do this. Hopefully when we come back, that will look a little bit more defined. There we go, you can see it's a little bit more defined. That'll help when you're painting it because it sort of pulled it apart a little bit. It'll give you a little bit more texture. Next. Right, here's the main part of our chest. So this is the box part and now we're gonna get onto the lid, which is a little bit more complicated because we are going to be using craft foam, which is this stuff. It's just thin foam, it's just same as this, it's EVA, so it's closed cell foam. Paints well, and it's good for detail. Glue this together, we're using cheap super glue. That's what I usually use if I haven't got contact cement. If you've got contact cement, it will work a lot better. I don't have that because of the smells and things of living in a tiny apartment. This will do the job. Start by gluing one of the sides on. It's super simple, just make sure it's flat. I'm gonna glue the base in before we glue that last bit, just to make sure everything's cool. Here we go, sweet little dice box. If you wanna do an open crate for any of your RPGs, that's the way to do it, just do it with smaller pieces. So the lid actually overlays this a little. It's not, a, it's not uh, the same dimensions. It's slightly wider by the looks of it on my screen captures. And I'll pop these screen captures up, by the way, on my website when I pop this uh, video up so that you too can look at the same reference shots I was looking at. And the reason that I'm gluing them back to back is so that we get a smooth inside of the chest, which actually helps the finished product. So although that was a pain in the neck that that went wrong, it didn't go wrong for you. It just went wrong for me and that's the most important thing. So neat guys, so, so neat. Make sure it's still big enough. Yes, it is. And we're gonna wrap the same way we did on this one. Now, as I said earlier, I'm using white and that is purely so that you can see it easier on camera. Measure the side, cut the strip, and you want it to be a centimeter or so inward. So like this. So you want it to be the width of the two foams plus an additional centimeter or so. You want two of those, because it's got two long sides. All right, I need to score in the wood grain again. Ugh, I've just realized. Let's start with the neat side. Good thing is, I guess this is supposed to be made of wood, so it would have a few little bumps and lumps in it. Now, corners. We want to cut the corner. You can see I did that on this one that we botched. And the reason for that is that we can knit them together later and it will look like that. So just check them, that they're roughly the right angle. And then we'll glue down this bit here, the lip.
Now those corners, we want these corners to knit in here. So just cut it until it does. Should be roughly the same angle. There we go. And then when you glue it, you should be able to knit it together fairly neatly. Same on both sides. Whew, and we're back to where we were when we botched it up before. There's our lid, a little bit wider now. We can put the locking mechanism on the front. When we do that, we'll choose whichever side looks neater. So you can see this one's all lumpy and bumpy from where I cut it poorly underneath. This is the side the locking mechanism is gonna go on. I'm just gonna measure it, perfect. So we know that that's the central, central point on that side. All right, so the lock looks like a little, a little shape. I'm gonna do that now. In fact, I'll do it with a different color again so you can see. Three and a half centimeters long. So once you've got your little rectangle, you just want to curve off the sides because that's what it looks like. On this one, if you're making a normal treasure chest, you don't need to do this. This is Raccoon Lagoon. We're going for that look that it's got. And it should look like this once it's glued on. So you want to leave a little tiny gap at the bottom and a bigger gap at the top. You do that now. And there's like a thing on it that comes down like that, which we'll sort out in a bit. Speaking of which, we need to make a tiny padlock. We're just gonna use some scrap that we had. Watch your fingers and cut a piece. Just cut the back off it and it will give you a slightly thinner piece than the main piece because we don't want it to be too chunky. Again, it's meant to be an old piratey type lock, I think, so don't worry too much about neatness. Be fine once it's painted. We'll do the we'll do the loop that goes around it. So there's a loop for the padlock obviously. So take your other bit that you, you had and cut a strip, sort of a squared off, and then cut the cut along the edge and it should round it off a little bit. You need to do that all the way around a few times. We blob, curve it round and check the length. So it needs to be about that, about that long the looks of it, I think. So we'll cut that. That's how long it needs to be. We blob, make sure it's in roughly the same position on this side as the other side and press. There's our little padlock. Now also on the chest, there are little nubs. They're like little bolts, I think. So again, we're gonna use the same process. We need some thinner foam, so slightly thicker than the craft foam. Right, so let's start with the lid. On the lid, there are two on each side and these need to match up with the chest underneath. So we need to bring it in a little. And the chest, Let's choose the nice side, this side. Okay. Okie dokie. Getting there. This is what it looks like so far. And it wouldn't be me, would it? If I didn't make a huge mistake and then cut myself like a ninny, I'm just gonna go and sort that out. Okay. Here we go. Right, the nubs on the side, there's none on the actual base, but there are two here, so we'll pop those on now. We're hitting the home stretch. It's not exact, but it'll do. It'll do. We're hearing that a lot today, aren't we? It'll do. There we go. This goes about here. So we'll take the lid off. And glue it on. Now the little strip that we had before that was going to lock. You just want to curl over the end, maybe once or twice. So a little bit of glue 
and then curl it over. And then maybe even again. Here we go. And that will look like there is some kind of spindle going through holding it on, right? As opposed to just a flat piece of foam. That's what we want. I'm gonna actually cut the corners off. I don't know if this is the case, but just to make it look more like a latch. There. That'll glue there. And then our little lock will just sort of dangle there when it's shut, hopefully, hopefully. That's just a way of getting around that issue of it uh, needing to close. This here, just leave a little loop. When you paint it, it'll look cool. Another little cheat because I don't have a Dremel. If I had a Dremel or a hot knife, I would uh, input the hole for the lock, but we don't, so I'm gonna output it. And the reason for that is just so when you paint it, it stands out a little. There, that's just a wee effect. So when we paint it, it'll look more like a lock. I'm gonna glue it on the top. And I'm gonna glue it so it forces its way down. There we go, when it's on, you can't even tell that it's not actually joined. Ba -ba. Right, time to paint it. Now, if you don't have Plasti Dip, which is a rubber paint, you can just spray paint this with black enamel uh, matte, and that will give you a nice base coat. I'm gonna use Plasti Dip just because it works better on foam. You can also use black acrylic. It'll just take you longer because it's not a spray. I'm gonna do that now and we'll come back when it's all dry. We're back and they're painted, they're all black. This is Plasti Dip, as I mentioned. If you don't have that, black acrylic. Just go around and if you see anywhere you've missed, hit it with some black acrylic. I'm just gonna do these deep creases to make sure that I haven't missed anything. Then we'll get on with painting it. All right, I think that'll do for what this is. Obviously, if I was um, if I was doing this not for a tutorial, I would take my time. But let's just crack on, shall we? Some brown. Again, this is just burnt umber, but you can use whatever brown you've got. You're going to need a bigger brush, so I'm going to use this one here that I've used before. You can use whatever brush you've got, but bigger will be easier here. You want to pop it on your brush and then pop it off your brush on some kitchen roll or whatever you've got handy. And then you want to go across the grain, so across that wood grain. And eventually the colour will start to uh, stand out, other than the cracks, which is what you want, because you want it to look like wood. So. Okay. How are we tricking here? Not bad. Next up, we're gonna tape off and do the metal. So the metal is everything other than the fishy and underneath and these bits here. I'm gonna need to hope memory's right because my Laptops died and that's where my reference shots are, but I'm pretty sure this entire thing here was silver, so we'll go for it, see how we go. Okay, next up, these bits. Last but not least, the fish. And we're gonna do that blue, because from memory, it was blue. Start with a little bit of dark blue. We're gonna need a splodge. And then we're gonna lighten it up with some light blue to bring out the edges more. There we go. That is it done. I will um, take some better photos. Oh, actually it would help if we uh, un taped it first to see it, wouldn't it? Durr. There we go, there's the lid. Pop it together. And I'll take some pictures out in some proper light, of course. Ta-da! 
Raccoon Lagoon Dice Box. That's a fun little thing. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And I'll see you on the next one, be it VR, board gaming, some kind of geekery, because uh, I'm an old geek from way back. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love it if you did. I'm trying to build up my channel subs. And hey, if you have got something you want me to cover that I haven't covered, just let me know. I'm happy to do that as well. It's good practice for me uh, with the video editing. I'll take some pictures in proper light. These fluoro things above me are terrible. Not very shiny. I'll pop some pictures up now. Have an awesome day or night wherever you are. Nerf and Stein out.